Okie dokie, if you're here to see how to build a non-load bearing wall, well I'm gonna build one right here. So come in. Yes. The wall is gonna start over here and it's gonna go all the way across to over here. So first you need to figure out how far that is, how many feet that is, and then you take that amount of feet. So let's just say 10 feet and you're gonna times it by uh, 12 inches because there's 12 inches in a foot and you need to break down the distance in feet down to inches. So now that we know the inches, then you divide that by 16 inches because you do 16 inch centers all the way down and that'll figure out how many boards you need. And then you're gonna need a top plate and a bottom plate. You don't need a double top plate because it's only a non-load bearing wall. Okay, so let's get that started and uh, go to the store and get your boards and I'll meet you right back you here. You used to have an excuse not to get those 16 boards in your Toyota Camry, but you don't anymore now that you've met me. Cause I got balls deep except for that six foot hangout. Uh, what are we talking about again? Okay, this is my top and bottom plate. You're gonna want to measure the bottom from baseboard to baseboard and the top. Okay, for me, I'm just gonna square it up and shim it if I need to, because there's not gonna be a load on it. I'll show you how I'm gonna do all this. But here's the top plate and bottom plate. I put my tape measure on one end, and I've uh, sandwiched the two boards together with a screw on each end, one down here and one down there. And then I'm measuring on my tape measure. There's a little red mark at every 16 inches and I've, to make it easy, and I've gone ahead and made my 16 inch center marks all the way down. And you can see how they're gonna be perfect because they're lined up down here and they're lined up on the other end. And then you're marking them together with the speed square and with this tape measure. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, every 16 inches, you can see it's red. So at 32, it's gonna be red and so on and so forth. Makes it very easy. Now I'm going to take those screws out that I have those lined up and I'm going to start throwing in my studs. So I'm going to show you what this looks like laid out on the ground. Okay, I've got my carpet cut out. It's cut out and the pad below it is cut out. We're smooth against the floor. We're over against the wall here, over against the wall here. You can see nothing's actually nailed in. I just have everything snug tight. I'm going to build this sound barrier wall and fireproof wall right on the edge of this contraption that used to be a chimney um, piece where the chimney was going up through there. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right there. It's about one foot from this wall to give the sound some break. Once it goes through here, it'll just kind of bounce around in here and it won't actually come out here. So we're about a one foot over from this wall, all the way down. And I'm gonna get this more precise, hammering it in place and such whenever I get there. But I had to, because it's 14 feet, I had a screw right here that I rested it on. Um, so I got this side up in the place that it needed to be and it's pretty tied up against the ceiling right there. And then it was kind of hanging down over that screw. And then I moved my ladder over here and I raised it up and set it on that. And now it's all tight with no screws or anything. That's what you want. I'm not gonna be able to build this wall on the ground because you can see all my material and stuff is in here. And that wall would lay down, it's a 10 foot ceiling. So we're pretty, pretty tall ceiling right here a normal bigger than a normal house um, so this would be an upgrade or whatever you want to call it but anyway so I couldn't do it on the ground so this is what I'm doing I'm gonna build it in action um, one board at a time and you can see my lines there's the 16 foot center line right here and straight above it there's one right there all the way down I'm gonna go ahead and get all these boards cut the same length as those two since they're both the same I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other eight like that or nine or whatever and I'm gonna bring you back once I got them all in place. I'm just using a simple little basic air compressor and always check your regular regulator pressures and whatnot, uh, tank pressure. Here's the regulator pressure for the max operating is 100 PSI. So you can see I'm right underneath 100 and it has to be at least, I think 60, but you always wanna check your gun. So I'm gonna show you my gun real fast because I actually didn't know this, the first house that I built and I learned the hard way, so. <laughs> uh, this is three and a half is the longest it can do. It needs to be 70 to 120 PSI. And then it gives you the minimum and maximum dimensions of the nails. You can do as small as a two inch nail or as big as a three and a half. And then the 0 0.48, 0 0.113, blah, 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 blah. And you're also gonna wanna check the degree of the nail, the nail gun. In my case, it's a 21 degree nail gun. And that's the, the little container here holding all the nails. Some of them are straight, 
some of them are angled and some of them are angled really a lot so check that too the dimensions this is a three inch is what i chose at 0.120 and the angle is a 21 degree angle so you're going to want to make sure all that before you get your nails and you don't want to screw anything up or blow up your gun i've seen them break and then if you don't do enough psi it's not going to shoot the nail all the way in so that's important also i've got my lighting in here because it's getting dark out and there's no electric electric uh, electricity right now so bear with me hang with me i know lighting is important so i got it right here i'm gonna set you down and show you how i'm attaching all of these boards you want to make sure that the boards are flush with the bottom plate that they're not sitting back or pushed out forwards because when you start sheetrocking or when the sheetrock guy comes, he's not gonna be happy because you're gonna be fiddling with this or he's gonna have to mess with it for days before you can even start sheetrocking. So keep that in mind. In my case, I'm sheetrocking, so I don't wanna have a hard time either. Lining them up on the centers, right in the middle, the board, the center, those marks we made is right in the dead center of that board. And we know that's every 16 inches. I am just nailing this directly into the baseboard and there's a gap over here, but you'll see why. I'm not best worried about this, okay? I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. It's gonna make this easy on me in the future. I don't have to do any demo. Um, it's whatever. I'm gonna fill that hole in because it needs to be a mouse hole, clearly, but I've gotten rid of the mouse. <laughs> All those bottom ones nailed in. Now I'm gonna individually level them just to double check because, you know, um, you never know with an old house. This wall would be square, but you can you can shift the wall this way at the top left, or you can shift the wall that way at the top right. So that would make all of these boards off a little bit um, if that was the case. So I'm gonna level each one just to double check. And I just put them on those marks and it'll be close enough to level it. And then you might need to tap it a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you were building it on the ground, it'd be a different story, but since I did it like this with just one board on the left and one board on the right, it could have shifted either way fairly easily. So now that I'm putting all these in, that top mark on all those 16 inch centers might be off a little bit. That's why I'm telling you just to save you a headache in the future. Trust me, I've done it all. Another thing I forgot to mention is on the left and on the right, 
You're gonna to wanna to put a few tack nails once you get your wall level the opposite way as well. So you want your boards level with the, you wanna flush with that top plate and flush with the bottom plate, real smooth like this, where you can sheetrock it easy. And then once you got that, so that means these boards are straight, but now we need to make them straight also this way. So you can see at the top, there's a bigger gap than at the bottom blah 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 just barely not recognizable by the human eye but anyway it's going to be a little bit different and you want to measure uh you want to level it on this side and level it on this side as well and once you get that tack it at the top and then go to the other side and level that and put you some tack nails um, at the top on that side like i did right here and then you're going to want to go in the middle of the wall and you know level the wall in the middle as well and once you get that done, you're gonna go through and pop the rest of the nails in each block. And I'll show you what that looks like right now. So now that you got the top, you're gonna to wanna to go to the bottom and do the same thing. We know the wall's level, so I'm gonna to get to tacking. You can see we're level on both directions all four directions actually everything's completely level we've got the top plate and the bottom plate secured the wall is secured over here it's secured over there it's secured into actual wood in the ceiling if you need to go up there remember put some blocks in there um, your ceiling joists would say are running this way just put a block in right here right where that wall is all the way down and you can nail your wall into that um okay and over here I left the metal from the old drop down ceiling. You'll see why if you follow me into episode three. Um, I'm doing a, another video right now currently. Um, down here, you'll see what I do in episode three. Subscribe to the channel. If you like home improvement videos, like this video if it's helpful in any way. And I got a lot coming up, so follow me on. I'll see you next time.